So the other day I was outside when my neighbor's little girl came by on her bike. She stopped to say hi and to ask questions because that's what she does. Miss Jessica, yes, why is the sky blue? Well, it has something to do with all the water on the earth, I think. Why don't birds sing all night long? Well, they need to sleep. Why do we sleep? Because we need to rest to stay healthy. What if I never, ever, ever slept again? Well, that would be terrible. Why do hawks eat squirrels? At that moment, a flock, a hawk had flown over with a squirrel in its talons. Have you ever eaten a squirrel? Well, no, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> Why do I like the color blue? Well, because it's pretty. Why do people die? Oh, boy. <laughs> if you've ever spent any time at all with children, you know they are full of questions, and one thing leads to another. And for the most part, it is pretty fun to see where their minds go, how they are discovering the world around them, what they notice, and what brings them excitement. That curiosity is wonderful and healthy, and as we know, is a huge catalyst for growth and learning. If we never ask questions, it is pretty hard to learn anything. And our world stays really, really small. But unfortunately, that carefree, easy, free-flowing questioning often stops for kids, eventually. One day, they will ask a question and be laughed at or someone will get short with them, or a peer will roll their eyes and say, everyone knows that, or something worse. Eventually, we all stop asking as many questions as we once did, afraid we might look foolish, afraid we will seem stupid, or we just become afraid of what the answers will be. Which brings us to verse 32 in our reading today. It is one of the saddest verses in the Bible, I think. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. They did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. It's such a human thing, isn't it? I think we can all relate. At some point or another, we felt the same way. Now, no one can deny that the last few days with Jesus haven't been tough for his friends. It has been so surreal, and we can't help but wonder how much easier it would have been to understand if they had not been afraid to ask the questions that they needed to ask. We can't help but wonder how much they would have grown in faith and in their skills, in hope, for what actually was to come if they'd just been able to talk with him honestly. If we look at where this passage falls in the Gospel of Mark, we'll see that Jesus' friends have just witnessed the transfiguration. Do you remember that? That's that strange time when they're on a mountain with him and they see him transfigured. He all of a sudden starts glowing white and he is surrounded by Elijah and Moses. Now, Peter really didn't understand what was happening then. Who would? And instead of asking questions, what is going on here? What does this mean? Instead of doing that, he offered to build huts for them and stay on that mountain forever. Maybe if we just stay here long enough in this space, I'll understand. And they never did talk about what they'd seen. And then Jesus does a healing that the disciples were unable to do because we are told they lacked faith. They asked why they couldn't do it, and Jesus told them, well, this kind of healing only comes through prayer. And the conversation stops. When really they should have been asking, well, what kind of prayer? How should we pray? What should we pray for? How does prayer strengthen us? 
And then in a story we'll hear next week, after they're afraid to ask any of these questions to understand, after trying to make themselves feel better by bolstering their ego about talk of who's the best and the greatest, who's the smartest, they encounter another exorcism. Only this time, it's being performed by someone who is not part of their inner circle, doing something that they cannot yet do themselves. And they want this stopped. Why is this person performing miracles when he is not one of us? What does this mean? How do we work with people who are so different from us? It is a really difficult time for Jesus' friends. Their egos are crippling them. They are afraid to ask the questions they need to because they are afraid of acting foolish. They're afraid of their friends making fun of them. And they're probably more than a little afraid of the answers. Why does the Son of Man have to suffer? If you are the Messiah, why aren't you a strong king? Where is our army? Where is our help? Why is this so different than we imagined it would be? When are you going to be in charge? Why aren't you afraid? Why do you have to die? Will we die too? How on earth are you going to rise after three days? How can I believe? How can I believe, how can I trust in something that is just so weird and so hard to understand? What if they hadn't been afraid to ask those questions? If they hadn't been afraid to hear the answers? If they hadn't been afraid to grow? How would their relationship with Jesus and each other have been stronger? When I was younger, and it came time for me to be confirmed, I was full of questions. And I had spent some time being pretty heavily influenced by some people who weren't too keen on asking lots of faith questions, who thought it best if you just believe exactly what is written in the Bible. So when I returned to the United Church, full of normal teenage doubts and questions, and was approached about confirmation, I remember finding the courage to ask the question that plagued me most. Can I be confirmed if I'm not sure I believe everything exactly as it's written? Am I really still a Christian if I question? If you have ever lived with gnawing, uncomfortable questions, if you have ever experienced doubts, you maybe understand my relief when my minister at the time said that he lived with lots of questions too. And that's a good thing. Of course, faith isn't just a checklist of beliefs, but this is a journey. Join us he said to me, and let's talk about it. Let's build a community where we can ask these questions. Well, I knew right then that my faith had found a home where it and I could grow, no matter what happened in my life. And then I went to Israel during my Master of Divinity degree, and I had a chance to learn about something called Midrash. Now, this is a Jewish tradition of asking questions of the text which is exactly what we try to do here every Sunday in our worship and what we try to do in our Bible study. Every time we encounter a tricky line in scripture or something that maybe rubs us the wrong way, we ask questions of it. Why was this included? What if the disciples had asked more questions? Why did this gospel writer think it was so important for us to know that fact, that the disciples were too afraid to ask questions. And how does that impact us? How does that impact our faith community? The freedom to ask the tough questions, I think, is key to growing in faith. 
And welcoming those questions without fear or judgment, that is key to creating loving, progressive, wise faith communities. Why were they so afraid? Maybe somewhere along the way, Jesus' disciples started doubting their place with him. They started doubting whether or not they were really worthy of all this love they were hearing about. Doubting whether they were good enough or smart enough. We know they made a lot of mistakes along the way. And they got it wrong a lot of the time. And they did some things that really weren't very helpful. That egotistical argument about which one of them was greater was case in point. And we know that Jesus could get very frustrated with them. But never once, never once did Jesus imply that they were not welcome if they had questions. They were never told that these promises of God, this love and forgiveness and new life would be taken from them if they didn't have all the answers, or if they had doubts. After all, never, never has Jesus required perfection from them or from us. And there's some real comfort in that. In fact, today, after being told that the disciples didn't understand him but were so afraid to ask those questions, After that foolish argument about greatness, we see Jesus bring over a child. A child, as you can imagine, who is probably full of questions. A child lacking understanding, but full of curiosity. A child ready to explore the world. So Jesus brings this child and says, Whoever welcomes a child in my name welcomes me. Jesus brings a child and all of that child's vulnerability and wonder. A child who is probably not just standing there very quietly, as we might try to picture, amongst all these new people, but was instead asking a million questions and looking around and getting so distracted. And his point was made. Welcome the questions. Welcome the weakness. Welcome the uncertainty. Welcome the doubts. And you will make room. You will make room and truly welcome me in the midst of some of the deepest uncertainties and the biggest fears of our life. No, the disciples did not need to be afraid to bring their questions, and neither do we. We will never fully understand God. We just won't. And a lot of times, we are not going to be able to understand this world around us either. But together... Together we can experience the excitement of exploring and questioning and learning and growing. Knowing the whole time we're never alone. Thanks be to God for that.